Hello, everyone. Sorry for the short delay. Um, my name is Matan Parnes. Uh, I'm VP of Global Risk Sciences, which is the R&D arm for risk-related uh, activities in PayPal, uh, and also the general manager for PayPal Israel. And, and I'm also the one standing between you and lunch, so I will s try and be uh, interesting. Yeah, still early. So w what I wanted to cover today is basically uh, show how we leverage big data and uh, machine learning uh, into build the unique capabilities of risk, and also to touch in, in few places where uh, the role of the Tel Aviv office uh, plays a critical role here. So I've, I've put a few, few numbers to con mainly to convince you that uh, everything we do is a big, big data problem and that PayPal and the fraud area is really facing a big data and challenging problem to solve. Uh, we are talking about uh, almost 170 million active customers today doing 10 to 15 million transactions a day. In peak times, this can reach a few hundred transactions a, se a second. And in Black Friday, which we just heard, uh, this can reach 1,000 transactions per second. And eventually, we need to make a decision, a real-time decision, if this is a good or bad transaction. And every uh, transaction, the consumer, the customer can be good or bad, and the seller. Um, so this is a real challenge, deciding in real time. Now, those transactions and activity generate few billions of data points every day and lots of terabytes uh, every week. So we are clearly uh, in an issue of scale. And we are expected to continue and grow to 20 and 30% in each one of those areas every year. So many times when we build, we need to build scale to 10 times. Uh, otherwise, it's, uh, it's uh, not sufficient to, for the growth uh, we, we expect. So that's uh, the problem we are facing. Uh, now, I won't go over all the key um, competitive advantages of PayPal, but many times uh, the, the key things, or I, I will highlight uh, the fact that we are a closed network of merchant and customers, the fact that we are uh, active in 200, more than 200 countries, and very importantly, doing it in a very uh, compliant way, according to the regulation of every country. This is not a trivial thing to achieve, and a real competitive advantage. But I do want to focus on where the arrow is, um, many times quoted as one of our key competitive advantage is, um, all the, is building uh, the risk and fraud detection capabilities. And eventually it's making the merchants and the customers being able to make a transaction in a trusted way, a trusted and secure way. Now, this is our job, basically, making um, transactions in a trusted way. Think about uh, the changes that happened in this industry in the last few tens of years. In the past, we used to know, people used to know who are they interacting with um, many times on a daily basis. Then we moved to you know, knowing only sometimes, but seeing physically. Today, we are moving to a world where majority of transactions are, are happening uh, or will happen where few, ki few thousands of kilometers apart with each other and without customer and merchant never seeing each other face to face and for sure doesn't know uh, if this person is uh, trustworthy or not. So this is the challenge. Now mobile is becoming a key factor. We have already third of our uh, transactions on, on mobile expected to be 50% within 18 months, probably. Uh, mobile solves a lot of issues and you know, gives us a lot of uh, additional information, but it also complex things. You won't believe where people uh, make transactions from, and we need to evaluate more things. We also see the, the cases of uh, Apple Pay fraud, more identity theft uh, issues are entering the system, and this is what we need to solve. So combined with um, the external uh, data breaches or, uh, that we have, an estimated um, 
last year more than half a billion of identities, credit cards, uh, social uh, security numbers, all of this data is flowing into the web, uh, into the fraudsters' uh, hands. And with the notion that more people choose um, digital crime as their profession, and to be honest, this is uh, something that uh, we will continue to see um, because the, the regulation is behind everything and no one wants to go and, and sweat in order to um, steal a car in August. It's much easier to do uh, to steal uh, from the web and through uh, cyber crime. So this is part of uh, the challenges we have. So before I dive into how we do it, um, I want to, to emphasize that overall we are doing a good job. Um, if you see customers typically choose PayPal uh, and consider PayPal as a very trusted uh, brand, protecting their transactions, protecting their financial information and privacy. And they mainly choose PayPal when it's a cross-border transaction. That's where more than 70% choose PayPal because this is where we have less trust. Uh, I would also say that loss uh, ratios for PayPal are lowest when we compare similar, uh, scale, similar players in scale and complexity, and we have less than 0.2% of fraud-related loss, and this is uh, compared to uh, credit cards, real in-store uh, loss ratio. So we are in a very good shape here. The, the way to tackle it and what we do is we look at things uh, holistically. It's not just about keeping the security of the people and finding who is risky and who is not. It's about making sure that we are compliant, that we keep the information safe, and in the rare cases where we do miss, this is where our buyer and seller protection uh, programs uh, kick in, and actually, um, we pay back for every uh, loss that happened to the consumer. We just announced uh, uh, last week that we are expanding this also to the GD DG. So digital goods will also be protected. And this is part of uh, uh, expansion in, in buyer and seller protection. Now, I will focus on financial risk. And again, of course, we, uh, everything we do uh, is using a big data and machine and advanced machine learning. The focus is on financial risk, but I, I will emphasize that both on security and compliance areas, uh, machine learning and big data are playing a big part, and we manage to be innovators uh, while uh, leading the industry in trying to change regulation as well. So let's let's uh, dive into the financial uh, the financial risk and the fraud area. And I would like to uh, share a few examples. In the next few minutes, I will talk about a few examples. Uh, one example is basically how we leverage big data and what we do in the predictive model area. Uh, this is clearly uh, something that most companies which deal with risk uh, do predictive models. The second uh, example will be around how do we solve uh, how we use homegrown innovation in order to solve uh, real problems. And, and the problem we will, uh, I will show an example here, and the case study in the afternoon will be, is about connecting customers uh, together. So linking real life, uh, multiple accounts into one real life person. The third is about our uh, a comp complementary approach to predictive modeling and this is the heart of uh, the Tel Aviv office capabilities, is the story-based approach analytics, is where we take behavioral analytics and uh, turn it into insights, which helps us identify good people and uh, bring more good experience and more trust into the system. So let's start. Um, predictive modeling. So every risk function usually will take all the data that they have, 
create a model and will come out with a prediction based on past uh, experience if this transaction or this activity is actually uh, good or typically if it's bad. Uh, we moved in the last few years from uh, doing linear regressions we're with uh, 30, 40 variables to use neural network with more layers, more data layers and trying to mimic the human behavior th thinking and lately into using deep learning, basically leveraging the success we see in deep learning in other areas uh, like image classification or sentiment analysis, but using this into a fraud area. And all together, we combine them in a, the model ensemble technique to see uh, the best results, the combined best results, because surprisingly, sometimes even the linear regression model is, is the one that brings the, the best result in, in specific cases. And we use now in deep learning around 1,000 variables per model. All together, we bring them to eventually to bring superior results. Now again, this is challenging because it's happening in multiple, um, in multiple places. So every modus operandi of a, of a fraudster if he's trying, each, each, each time they're trying different technique, we have a model to tackle this specific area. And this, again, needs to happen in real time. And the SLA is constantly uh, being uh, dropped by our business unit. They want to go faster and faster because we as customers, we don't want to wait anymore four seconds. We want it now and in one touch. So this is the example of... Um, of uh, predicting how we use big data and machine learning in model uh, building predictive models. The second example is how we link, again, accounts into real life people. So in the past, when um, e-commerce started, every transaction were, was assessed um, by itself. How dangerous is this uh, transaction? And still, Many players who don't have accounts, this is what they do. Every transaction is assessed separately. Now we moved with PayPal and more companies growing, we moved into assessing in account level. So we know the history of this account, we know a lot of information, we gather, we analyze, and we can have a more uh, educated assessment if this is a good and, and, and a transaction that makes sense. But what we moved in the last couple of years is actually to do a multi-level account uh, assessment. This is where many people, we realized, have multiple accounts. By the way, this is true for PayPal, Facebook. I'm sure that many of you have more than one account. Now, for PayPal, you can have a legit reason to have multiple accounts. I'm an expat living in, uh, moving from uh, Israel to uh, California. I want to have a local account. Uh, but also uh, a fraud, fraudulent reason is where um, I, I, my account, I made fraud, my account was locked, I want a new account. So those are the two areas. Uh, assessing and connecting real uh, accounts to real life people, this is a big challenge. There is 10 to 17 optional pairs, hundreds of billions of events and data points that needs to be evaluated every time. So this is our case study in the afternoon, I invite you to come and hear how we did it both analytically and the technology behind it. The last thing I will touch is our unique story-based example. Again, this is a complementary uh, method to the predictive modeling. And I will start, it's best to start with an example. So we have a, an account of Sam Liu. He's uh, based in, he lives in New York, American account. He made transactions just from the US buying toys for his kids mainly. Uh, suddenly there is a transaction from Thailand at 2 a.m. local time and on $500. Now, what should we do? So, the typical and the bad story is it's too risky. It's so different from what he did in the past. I want to uh, decline this transaction and lock the account. 
This actually happened to me last week in, uh, in Shanghai. I was tw two times, I won't say the credit card company, but two times I visited my team, tried to pay in the restaurant, and I was declined. Why? Because it's risky, and they didn't connect that I'm there every month. But what we, we will ask ourselves is what is the good story here? Because good people eventually leave uh, traces on the internet, and they don't try to hide themselves. So potential good stories are, you know, maybe Sam is uh, working now in Thailand in a business trip. Maybe he's visiting his family, uh, or maybe um, he uh, is on vacation. It's a good place to be. Or the more extreme scenario, he's a soldier in the American uh, base there, based in Thailand. So now the challenge, and this is what we do, is how to create this, how to analyze which stories makes more sense, and more importantly, how to formalize and automate those stories. And we, we do it by our, our analysts and algorithm developers. They sit and review case by case of, what's, of where the model missed, the decision was not perfect, and try to see what is the story and try to analyze which ones can be automated and formalized, and then they work with our developers and the machine learning algorithms in order to create this in, that will be available in real time. So, for example, if you bought a, a ticket with El Al using PayPal, is it enough to say that you are in Thailand? Probably not, but if I get the itinerary from El Al and I parse it in a good way, then maybe it's enough. Maybe I get the, the accuracy that I want. And again, some of it is based on pure analytics, some of it is a combination of uh, techno-analytical patents that we have, but in general, we try, and this is a big change in the industry, we are looking for the good guys. So, not just looking for the bad guys in, in risk. This is, sounds naive, but this is a big mind shift change that happened in, in PayPal in the, last, uh, in the last few years. Risk organizations are all about finding the bad. It's a mindset that it's very hard to change, and we've made, managed to change it, and we are, our false positive ratio in many areas is less than one to one, which is far, far better than everyone in the industry. I will finish in a, a bit of uh, patriotism about our Tel Aviv office. So we have a, quite a big office. We have uh, more than 150 risk professionals in Tel Aviv. Um, it's a combination of uh, developers, QA, data scientists, analysts, algorithm developers. Uh, and this center today is the core of building solutions for fraud, for credit, and for compliance. Um, we are early adapters of big data technologies. You already heard a few of the, I heard couch based now, but many more technologies. We started uh, leveraging Hadoop uh, already three, four years ago, and we, we are focused on actually bringing real benefits and dollar to the bottom line of PayPal. Um, and I, I would say that because of the success in the fraud area, PayPal took a decision to uh, expand the local presence also to the security area. We just acquired SciActive a, a month ago, officially closed a month ago, and we are going to uh, open, uh, Tel Aviv will, will become the center of excellence for security, and the joint efforts of fraud and security together will take our uh, to the next level in building trust with customers. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, in, enjoy lunch.